How you going team? This vlog is uh, a talk with my children, my daughter and my son. And my son is going to share something with you guys that's really very, very important and very special. He has been going through a real transition with his life right now. Last year, when he was working at Tai Happy as a raft guide, actually not last year, it was early this year, this incident happened, uh, one of the people he was guiding almost lost her life. She was underwater for between three and four minutes. She passed un unconscious after about a minute and a half. She had a hand up, she was trapped. He was trying to save her, she was drowning. He kept on going down the river and every time he went down, he was risking his own life, as was the other guy that was trying to do it. And the same piece of, piece of water, I believe, and I may be wrong, but I believe it was the same piece of water, another guy had lost um, their life in the same place anyway. Finally, they got her out. It was a long time. She was blue. She was unconscious. Did CPR. Got a kickstarter. They had emergency services arrive, arrive at the scene, and she lived. But today, he's uh, gone and got a tattoo to Marcus, and he's he shares on this video what's that about. So I'm going to share that with you guys. So I asked him if I could, and he said yes. It's his truth, and I think it's very, very brave. Very brave of him to step into his fear and mark his body with something that was such a big part because he's basically walked away from being his dream, a raft guide. He's he's really processing it right now, how close that she came to dying and you know, his bravery was way and beyond. I'm so proud of my son. He's the bravest man I know. He put his life, he laid his life down for her and he saved her life, but he's also going, this is a high risk job. I don't know if I can go through this again, which is really good that he's in touch with his feelings. He's told his boss, and that's why he's staying with me, and that's why I've given him a full-time job, until he sorts of direction out in life. And that's what we do. We guide the people we love. And my son, well, he's my son. So, enjoy this uh, family video of my daughter and my son, and a bit around the farm. My lovely, lovely daughter's here, and I'm very going to quickly do a Q&A with her. What's the job you're doing while you're staying with Dad? Um, currently picking kiwi fruit flowers. What sort of kiwi fruit flowers? Male or female? Male, golden kiwi fruit flowers. Okay, golden. And what do you do with flowers? You pick them, put them in some sacks and take them to the pollen mill, hand that job over to them, and then they harvest the pollen, store it for 12 months, sprinkle it on the female plants the following year to artificially pollinate the kiwi fruit. Cool. So it's like picking money. It's okay, so how much gold. a kilo do you get for each flower? Uh, Ten dollars at the start of the season. Yep. So how much money can you make in one day? Um, at the early days, there's only so many flowers you can pick. So at the start, like probably the most I got on my third day was twenty kilos. Twenty kilos a day in a day. That's good going. Okay. But it will pick up. So next you can make week. two hundred dollars a day. Yeah. Awesome. You can make a lot more as well once. Are you having fun? Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts and listen to a lot of music and I get really in the zone. It's Do you ever, fun. ever, ever listen to Clay Tall stories? No way. <laughs> Thank that you, was a normal day at home. <laughs> okay, you give a share and um, I will see you later. Okay. Hey, did you enjoy the trout that I gave you guys? Yeah, it was good. Did they like it? Yeah, they definitely liked it. They liked yeah, it? it? I'm pleased about that. It wasn't that spicy. Yeah, well, spicy for me. So you probably saw that I bought that caravan because I didn't have enough space because inside we're building in here. I'm going to very quickly show you guys just roughly, but Arb, we've done all the thing with Arb today, but what's going on here? Pretty much this is what we've got here. Now, new floor underneath, all put in, and Arb will go through that. But what we're going to do is, it was actually, I asked many people about the kitchen, and because we film cooking and stuff, we're going to have an island here in the room it's going to come out to about here it's drawn in i don't know if you can see how well it is and that island is going to have a gas top on it like a hob and an oven we're going to have an oven in here for the first time we're going to have an oven and i've got to actually learn how to cook with an oven because i haven't cooked with an oven for years and then this corner over here is going to be like a little place where the uh we sort of uh almost say shelf but like a little bar we can sit here and have a coffee and look out at the world that's what's going to happen but of course, it's all time, effort, and money. And the money's the, the, the thing which really, it just costs so much. That's ridiculous how much it costs to do this. And I'm going, well, how much do I need? Data just said to me, Dad, 
are there going to be rats in this house? And I said, sweetheart, we've got rid of all the bloody rats. She's always wanted to have a really nice home. I've never, ever given her a nice home. We've always rented shitty places or we've never had a nice home ever. So it means there's a place for my kids to come back and stay with me that I'm feeling comfortable that they're comfortable because she said she could never stay in this house again after a rat scratched her face with it. And fair enough too. We've got rid of the rats. We've got rid of all the environment around them. All these trees where they were living, all gone. We poisoned. Look at look at this here. This is all the bloody bats that the rats chewed out of the ceiling. Everything's gone. We're taking everything away in arms, rodent proofing every bit of the house. And the front room here, which is going to be my bedroom, which is now full of clutter and stuff, because we're just piling one thing into there and we take everything out of the kitchen and stuff. It's all a bit of chaos. But you know what? There is always chaos before there is order. How about that for a saying? It makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Everything's got to get rooted up and then sorted before you have things in order. Speaking of chaos, having these guys here, let me pan around, and with the other chickens, did not work. Now they are here, and I can see that the duck has pushed one of its eggs out of the box. The duck is sitting on eggs for babies, and someone has picked it. It's okay, guys, okay. Okay, it's been broken. It's been broken. I was going to put it back in, but can't use that one. That's for Bruno. Duck eggs are delicious, and we're going to give this to, to Bruno. He's in his box right now, where he's been all day, because I've been away, and he's roaming. He doesn't like being in his box. Hey, boy, we're going to let you out, eh? Come on, let's go. Here we go. Good boy. That's a good dog. Got an egg for you. Come here, boy. Bruno, come. Come on, boy. Got an egg for you, eh? You want that, eh? Yes. Good dog. You'll crunch it with his mouth pretty quick and get the yolk out of it pretty quick, won't you? The old tongue's already going in there. Look at that You're going to get a bit of dirt in there, eh, mate? A good tucker. Today, Pace came running down here. He's not supposed to be. He's supposed to be up at the A-frame, which is 200 metres that way. And... He came running down here and I called up Holly and said, hey, Pace is here. She said, he can't be there, he's at home. And I said, well, he's not at home because he's right now looking at me and very excited. She said, well, how did he get there? And I said, well, I don't know. She said, but it's all locked up at home, he can't have. So anyway, I had him in that little cage here and I met Murray, my old landlord, and said to him, hey, uh, Pace must have escaped from the A-frame. He said he did escape from the A-frame. He jumped out of the top window. It's a two-story building. And the only place he can get out, and he, the sliding door was open, he'd open it, and he jumped off the balcony. It's a fucking long way down for a wee dog to go without a parachute. And that's what he did. So, how the hell he didn't break anything, but he didn't, and he came bounding back to here. Anyway, Big Z uh, yesterday picked a fight with Simon's dog, Mick. Latched onto him, and Simon was pissed off. Simon's dad was pissed off, and rightfully so. Big Z's got a bit of a problem where he fear bites, and... It's just the way he's always been. It's a moody thing. And having pace for a father, he's got that terrier sort of thing. And he grabbed onto the dog and it wasn't good. I'm not going to put up with it if it carries on. I don't want to get rid of the dog because he's potentially a really good pig dog. But uh, I just won't put up with aggression in the pack. Not at all. B's also been aggressive towards uh, Bruno. But I've pretty well stopped that on the... Haven't I, mate? I've stopped on top of that one. And what I've done is I've had him on a chain every time I've walked him. And I've had a stick. And as soon as he showed any slight aggression, I've tapped him with a stick. It's only this one here. Just a wee tap in the brisket, just like that. And he's like, because he's whippet, he just knows. No, no, that could be not, not fun to have that. And he'll pull his head in. And it's continual work, because I don't want dogs that fight. Poe, well, she's always good, aren't you, girl? Anyway, that's the dogs. I am going to walk them, but not quite yet. Because I've got five young athletic women that like to kayak that's what the clothesline riggy looks like they go out they do extreme stuff they come home they dry their stuff and all those blood spots they come from your ear don't they mate that's right because you're a bit of a silly bugger that's right yeah picking a fight with another dog stay we're not going yet no nah, we're not going yet stay there ducky has taken upon herself to extradite herself outside of the pen she doesn't want to hang out with the other ducks she wants to be a free duck well that's okay by me what I am going to do is I'm going to put a doorway here. <laughs> this chicken can actually easily fly over here. It's not. But a doorway here and I'm going to allow these other ducks to wander freely through the orchard. 
because they don't really get in the garden. This duck doesn't touch the garden. However, chickens, that's a different story. They're not allowed in the garden. Oh, yeah. This is what we're living off, guys and girls. And as you can see, the sparrows, well, they love the broccoli. Of course, they can't get into it there. It's perfectly good there, but this side here, absolutely stripped. Yes, Ducky, I know. I want to show them the watercress. Look, it's flowering. The watercress is flowering. Can you still eat it? Well, I guess you can, but this is just going to town. But it is flowering. I water it every day. We've got plenty of tucker in here. Jeez, it's getting hammering. Someone's been picking that. Probably the girls. That's okay. That's what it's for. Or something else got in there. Bugger of I know. I've been saying to all young people here, this is what you need to grow, guys. This is what every student should have. With, um... Well, there's one there that's just growing now, you can see. It's a courgette. They will turn out so much fruit. Fruit? Vegetables. I guess it's a vegetable. Yes, courgette must be a vegetable, because the marrow is a vegetable, and the courgette is just a bigger marrow, isn't it? But for a student, that's a good tucker to have, because you've just got ample grows all the time, and there's your green vegetables. Not real, like, leafy greens, but good enough. So, uh, the chicken house, which is uh, the old front door of the farmhouse, crazy, isn't it? It's worked out really well, but I need more chickens, and David Vass is going to get us some. The best thing I ever had in my life was, um, or ever bought in this place here, as far as uh, in my life, as far as chickens go, in my life of having chickens, is this thing here. Automatic feeder. Go away for days, don't do a bloody thing. They are sorted. Why well, didn't get one a long time ago? And the eggs, well, yep, look at that. That there is actually two days. Two days in there. Is there any down the other end here? Uh, no, they've all laid up in this one box. Isn't that crazy? So two days, I've got another one, two, three, four, five, six. It's not bad for chickens that are eight years of age. It's pretty bloody good. I'm gonna leave those here for now. So these guys are productive. And someone's put a squid in there. I don't know where that came from. I know my son's been fishing today. The farm. That's well, not really a farm. Lifestyle block. Well, some people call them Life sentence block, because you've always got work to do. On the list of things to do, which is a never-ending list around here, is this here. The punt. <laughs> it's pretty rough, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty bloody rough. But hey, we do have SS Commodore seat. They don't make Commodores anymore. A lot nicer than the shitty old Honda seat in the front. And we do have a good motor on the back. But the old girl, which I built probably 12 years ago, without any plans, as I've said before, she's starting to fall apart. These fracture stresses are just getting worse and worse. Look, this is, framing's doing nothing. And it's, it's like it right throughout. That one's actually not bad. That in there. It's probably the only one that's still holding together. But we can't keep on. We can't keep on. Like, you know, look at this here. Cracked to buggery. Look at this one here. Cracked. So I'm going to completely reframe this thing. And I'm also going to make it a little bit higher up the sides. That's one job that I do want to get onto because there's fish out in the bay right now and you guys are catching them. I will use a kayak, it's also going to be fixed up. The other job that uh, is going to be dealt to is this over here, which I haven't talked about on the channel, but this shed here, which is known as Jean's Shed, with all the scrap wood that's come out of the house. This is actually, I know it looks like it's falling down, you put a bulldozer through it, but actually the framing in that is good. The roof isn't leaking, it's just the front. The whole thing needs to be tipped up. And to my thinking, we get all the rubbish out of there, we get a tractor, right? We pull that up, I reframe the front, which I can do, straighten the whole lot up, put it on a flat surface. I've got a space there for people to stay when they come here. So I bought that caravan, but that there's a really good room, and I'm gonna do that project. I'm not sure how yet. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to fix it up. I'm going to re-get that room going because it's a, it's a space that can be used. I thought about, you know, bulldozing. I'm not quite sure how we're going to pull it up because there's this bloody tree and I don't really want to chop it down. This great big tree right here beside it, which is in the wrong bloody place. Um, some people look and go, nah, too much work. But knowing what it costs to build stuff, nah, I reckon I can resurrect that. So that's another job. And also, I want to show you another job. This is the old garage. It was here when I bought the place. And it's completely falling down. This is the... Look at this. Literally. Look. That's... You get an idea of just how rotten that is. Okay? That is bugging. 
that has been lined with non-treated timber. This here, just about in the same state. You could say, well, you could put a bulldozer through that. But if you look over here, this timbers are all good. And that's good, and that's good, and that's good. And if you go over here, that's solid. And if you look up here at the roof, most of that there is pretty good too. As is that, as is the trusses. Go through here, these trusses are good. These trusses are good, framing's good. So, pretty much the front, which actually is an old caravan, or off a vehicle, see that there's been put on. I take the whole front off, reframe it, probably lift it and put it, you can't see there because we're using it to store all the windows and stuff. Probably put some new piles in and lift it up. So we've got all that still, because all the outside's fine. And what I do is, and tell me what you think here. What I do is, I clad it the same in the front as the house. The same cedar. That beautiful colour there. I do that at the top and the side. I think you could probably clad the whole front for around about 800 bucks, I reckon. It's not a lot. It's quite expensive to get done. And that would really fit with the style of the house. And the rest I could sort of make do just. Just saying, honey, this idea I've had. Little shower down. See the, the old shed there? Yeah. I'm thinking about once I replace the bottom plate and the framing in the front, which is rotten, you can see it's all falling to bits. Yeah. I could clad it with the same stuff as the house. Yeah, it'd be cool. It'd be cool. So then it fits in rather than bulldoze it. Because I can't really, we just cannot afford to put another whole new garage there. You're going to keep those windows? Or like, um, yeah, no, take all that out. The boat no, take all that out. Yeah, completely re reclad that. Yeah, that's the idea there anyway. I don't know, you guys remember I shot this. It was actually goat, and the chunk out of it's where Bruno bit some. So it's two legs. Chunk. We're getting down to the we're getting down to the uh, what's left in the freezer for everybody to eat. And this is for the troops. This is for Dayla's friends and Dayla tomorrow. So think ahead, honey. There you go. Take it aside. Put it in the chili bin. Just let it there, and it will thaw. And tomorrow you can cook that up. Currently, Yona's out trying to catch some fish for them. If they don't catch fish, they'll be eating those eggs out of the uh, box. Six eggs, five girls. You nice. Can do it. It's okay. Yeah, no, yeah. the girls are all fishing too. So They're all fishing. Should get something. They might bring some mussels back too. Well, there's mussels down there to harvest. Yeah. You got plenty of food, eh? You got plenty of food. Yeah, we've just been like trying to eat what we can find. We've got honest. plenty of food. You're doing all right. It's we stole. Are we um found these lemons? On the Where, where'd you find the lemons? Uh, I don't know. A tree. What on this orchard? No. Because. Yeah, you got it only take from our land, not other people's land. Well, we were in Kaipere and there were these random people and... This is not the chilli bin, where's no, the other chilli bin? We need to find the right chilli bin for that there. This is a, and we asked what? some people if we could have some lemons and they said, we've got heaps of lemons and we only stay in our house like one week a year. So, so they gave it to you? Awesome, awesome. So I was just going to ask. It's really thoughtful. Oh, I'll just put it in this bucket. Oh. Yep, it'll dimple down though. Where's the other wee bucket we had? I don't know, it was yours, so it would have been gone. No, I haven't taken that to go. Leave it, leave it the sink, but that will thaw and you, that will give you um, meat for two days for people. It'll probably go through because we made the last mm -hmm. week go through there. Make sure that when it thaws, oh, there's your bin now. When it thaws, make sure you put it in the fridge and don't leave it out because things can go off very quickly too. We've got a bin there for it. Perfect. Probably a bit too small, but hey, that'll be okay. Because you want to get some heat so you can cook it tomorrow. Mm. You haven't cleaned okay. out from the last meat I gave you. Yeah. That's what you need to do, sweetheart. Got to hey, keep it clean. It wasn't you. Okay. I love you. Leave us with that. I'm going to go and do some work. Okay. You enjoy, yeah? Thanks. Okay. You can take this here. It's keto bread. Oh, that's That said meat and you haven't washed it. It's rotten. Yeah. I mean, do you know actually who it probably was? Who? You. Do you know why? Why? Because you had that um, fellow deer back steak and that was the only thing left in there. When I took the fellow deer back steak out, all your meat was still in there. Was it? Yes, it was, but good try. Yeah, good try there. Well, good try trying to get out of that one. Yeah, can I just say something for real? Yeah, you say something for real, yeah. Not on YouTube? Okay, not on YouTube. I'll just pause it. Hold on, I'm going to pause. I'm going to get out of here because you keep doing that, I'm going to start crying, okay? Leave me to here cry by myself. You know, your team is lucky to have you making all the food for them while they're having fun fishing. Yeah, but they're also fishing too. Yeah. See you later, honey. Bye. 
Come on, mate. We're going for a walk. Come on. Come on. We're going for a walk. No, you're not having that. That's not for you. No, no. Right, Bixie, let's do this without any fights, eh? Come down. Come down. You can see all the blood that's come off his ear. That's why he's red around his collar. That's it. And you, mate, you behave yourself, okay? Let's get my stick before I even start. Just so you know, if there's any sort of carry on, you get that, okay? <laughs> That's right. Couldn't give a fuck, could you? No. You jump on Bruno and there'll be trouble. And I mean that, seriously. Behave yourself. Bruno's like, I'm ready to, to take you on, buddy. Bruno would kill him if he has a chance. Where you go, Bruno? Where you go? Where you go? Behave. Good boy. Good dog. No food in there. The only blood you'll find in there is uh, off Bigsy, not off meat. So you can come out. Poke him. Where you go? Where you go? So my old landlord, he's cut this grass, which is bloody good, because it's my land and he's a good bastard. I didn't ask him to, but he knows I haven't got a mower yet. And uh, I appreciate that. I could probably use that for compost, I suppose, or something. What do you reckon? No, you leave that here alone, buddy. Here, you just run down that row there. Mm -hmm. Dogs are smelling something on there. Could be rats. There's still a few rats living in here, but not a lot as there was. The population has drastically dropped around here. We've done a shitload of poisoning and a shitload of trapping. Still hares and rabbits in these rows. Get him, B. Good boy. Next row you look down at and you'll see someone's a hare setting up. Although now he's mowed it, there probably isn't. Each one's got a uh, potential rabbit sitting in it or a hare. Good dog. Get in. It's nice that freshly cut grass. Good to see. Unlike this grass over here, which I'm going to make into hay. Or baleage, not sure yet. One of you guys on the site gave me a name, a bloke called Tristan that does it. I can't find your uh, email or your personal message on Patreon. I can't find that. And I want Tristan's number to ask him to get a price on getting this done. Because... Uh, I think we go with baleage and then we're going to stick a big perimeter fence on the outside and then put electric fence sections for some livestock. It's going to be quite awesome actually having a few sheep in here because uh, that means we've got an endless supply of bloody meat. Could get very lazy as far as hunting goes and end up becoming a bloody farmer but it's not enough land there to make it sustainable. Just enough to get a, you know, a few animals on it. In the middle here I've got my two sheep still but I think we could fit a few more on this uh, 10 acre block. What's the numbers you run to uh, sheep to the acre? How many is it? Someone do me do me that. And if you had silage that you that you like got in the summer, you'd feed that out through the winter too, wouldn't you? Some people say that cattle are easier to deal with. I don't know. Well, cattle you don't have to share, but then you've got to have decent sized fences, particularly if you've got bulls in. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to put on, but I've got this ground here, and it's a bloody awesome asset to have. Bit of dirt. This is what I paid for, really. Like I said, when I bought the house, the house was considered at zero value. This is what I paid for, the dirt. It's a good paddock to own. One thing about this long grass is uh, you can get, sometimes rye grass can get in your bloody ears. You've got to be careful. It's pretty thick. In your box. You cut. Go steady, mate. No choke on it. That's Poe's lot. She doesn't have a lot, do you, Poe? Because you get fat easy. We well, ain't forgot about you, old mate. Good dog. Straight into your box, eh? Eat up. In your box. And that's where he stays tonight. So we don't have any accidents. Didn't take too long for the chickens to work out the automatic feeder in here. They watched the ducks and they were into it and uh, spending a lot of time in there. And that's where you should be, mate. Why don't we put you back in there, eh? I think we should. Can we go back in there with the other guys? What do you reckon? You go back in there with the rest? Eh? Yeah, because there's a feeder in there and I don't want it to keep feeding you outside. Let me catch you and put you in there or not? Eh? Come on. Give me. I don't want you to bite my finger. I don't, don't bite it. I don't bite it. So we can get you close so I can catch you and throw you in there. Yep, then I can get a leg from quick. How quick do I have to be to get a leg, eh? Yep. Mm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Now you're stuffed, don't you? Just gonna grab the other leg. I don't wanna break it. Roll you over. 
go do this on camera. One leg. Go down here with the camera. Hold the other one. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, we're sorted. Here we go. Now if you go in here, there's heaps of food in there, okay? Here we go. Here you go. Don't do that, chicken. Well, we'll cause some trouble in there, have we? I wonder if the uh, drake's going to try and shag like he did last time. It's funny how the old chickens attack because they haven't done that before. Chess going, fuck off on the boss. Don't go in there, there's a, there's a duck in there sitting on eggs. Don't go in there. Now if you use the feeder, don't go in there. There's a duck in there. There's another duck in there. Don't go in there, mate. It's like, oh, yep. Go use the feeder. This is four. These guys here in the feeder, smashing it. It hasn't taken that long to get used to it. There, there's water. What duck doesn't like water? There's a pond in there, hey? It's a pretty shitty looking pond, but a pond at least. So these funny old snap vlogs, I make uh, pretty much real time of what's going on in real time. It's currently uh, 8 o'clock in the evening, and I'm going to go back to the houseboat. I'm going to smash this onto the laptop and try and turn things around the right way a little bit. I'll do a slight edit and give you the day in real time as it ended. Nothing really exciting, but it's real time. And someone's just pulled up beside us there. G'day, mate. You guys been fishing? Did you have any joy? Hey, son. Yeah, yeah, you caught some mussels. You caught some mussels? Yeah. yeah. I was fishing hard. Uh, okay. So you didn't catch any fish, son? No. You go out to feed all these women and you come back and you don't provide for them, son. <laughs> you have let the village down, son. <laughs> Oh but you harvested mussels, did you? Yeah. Uh, I caught, no. caught them Jamie. on the line. You caught them on the line? Yeah. Jamie caught a mussel on her line. It's so yeah. hard to get them off. It's so funny. Right, I, I, um, okay, no worries. Are you guys working tomorrow? Not sure. Not sure, because I might be able to take someone for a hunt if someone wants to go. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know you do. We'll see how we get on. Um, so, I've given you guys two legs of goat meat that's frozen. It's a goat that I shot a while ago. Bruno had a chill on it, but that'll give you meat for the next two or three days, okay? So it's frozen there. Uh, you're, you're very welcome. The last lot of meat I gave you, no one cleaned out the chili bin, and, and Data just opened up and it stunk the house. So you've got to clean the chili bin after I've put meat in there for you, okay? Uh, yeah. Look at you looking at each other like, who was it? You all enjoyed it, but you've got to, you've got to clean that shit up. So Data's done that, so don't worry. Um, but the next lot I've given you now, it will take till tomorrow. So it will give you meat for three days. It's a lot of really good meat. Yeah. What are you up to, son? Other than fading at fishing? Caught a squid today. You caught a squid? Yeah. I saw that squid. Where'd you catch that? Cable Bay. You caught that at Cable Bay? We could have eaten it and you gave it to the chickens. <laughs> no, that was just his guts. Oh, that was his guts? Yeah. I oh, see so you did eat it. Well, the rest of it's in the fridge. Cool. Did you dive and catch it? Yeah. Awesome. Speared it with the sling. With the sling? Really? Yeah. So you got a Hawaiian slingshot? Yeah. Oh, the one out of my boat, out of yeah? The garage, yeah. Awesome. So, um, Firewood Matt gave us that, and you only caught a squid with it. Okay, that's not really going to feed all the women of the tribe, but hey, it's a start. <laughs> okay. Good try, son. Good try. <laughs> hey, there's, there's snapper out there, so we might have to go and do a mission do that. I'll, I'll think of it tomorrow, whether it's a hunt or a fish, but some, we'll do something, because so far, you failed. And so have I. My pig hunting was shit the other day. We, uh, we're not doing very well. You know what um, vegetarian means in Indian, eh? Hunter that is crap. Hunter that is crap, yeah. That's us. <laughs> I think there's something you want to show everybody that you got today, son. <laughs> Why do you want to show me? Come over here, son. That must have bloody hurt. Did it hurt there? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Holy, that's awesome. That's a tunny far, isn't it? Yeah. That's a tunny far. Wow. Did it hurt? Yeah, a wee bit. So tell me, why do you want to get a tunny far? Is it to do with the sea? Um, more, more the rivers. Yep. Um, and sort of, just as a sort of, I guess a bit of, like a protection type thing. Yep. And, well that's where around, it is. Yeah. And around that incident that we had on the river. Yep. Is it to remind you of the girl that nearly lost your life that you saved? Yeah, a little bit. That's cool, bro. Very cool, excellent. It's a, actually quite a meaningful thing, isn't it? Does it also like represent a part of your life that's like you've moved through in a way, or is it to protect you for the next time it pops up? Um, 
yeah, it's sort of representing a part that I'm still moving through a bit. Yeah, that's a biggie, it's a biggie. Well, that's cool. You know, you could write to her and tell that. Have you got any contact with her at all? No, I think Janie's got her email, maybe. That would be really cool because it's a pivotal moment in your life and you actually also were challenged about mortality and the reality of, you know, how delicate life is. Show me again, it's got a lot. And I think this is the first time I've actually ever seen you wear underwear. <laughs> uh, that's awesome, son. Really cool. Hey, I'm going to finish this vlog up, guys, and spend a bit of time talking to my son. Be good, can't be good, be careful. See you next one.